I operate on the principle that the human body was designed to work correctly. So if a ton of us are having issue with something, we then know there's been a deviation. So to me, the big deviation for the back is all this time spent sitting, texting on the computer. Our hip flexors get shortened. We're not really stretching out here because at least, at least if we're like sitting around the campfire like this, it's at least lengthening the glutes. It's at least strengthening the lower back muscles. Okay. So these bodies were working right and didn't all have back pain before these desk jobs started. So this is just one factor, but to me, this would be the biggest deviation. So if we take low back pain, now we look at, well, that's incorrect. The body wasn't designed to have low back pain. What's the biggest deviation? Now, how do we solve that deviation? To me, the biggest part of that is the ATG split squat. Notice the back knee is not touching the floor. So what's happening is by doing my exercise in this manner, I'm loading through a hip flexor stretch. So that's creating real length in the area. I'm not just resting here and pushing against it, nor am I strengthening in a partial range. I'm letting those hip flexors stretch under load. Now to clear up any confusion, this goal I initially used to fix my knees because my knees were so imbalanced with one of them a tight surgical mess, the other one a loose mess of no surgeries and torn ligaments. So the first goal is just to get full coverage of hamstring over calf, even if your heel has to lift up. But you can see that over time, as you get more ankle mobility and more hip flexor length, you could get deeper. And so in advanced zero, this is step five of zero. In advanced zero, it's still step five. And we train it different ways. So certain days, we are intentionally trying to lift that heel and get full coverage. And then other days, we're intentionally trying to keep the heel down and stretch and strengthen the hip flexors and that ankle mobility as much as we can. And both the mobility and the strength scale. So elevating your front foot, notice this is less angle on those back hip flexors. So I'm still able to load those hip flexors through a stretch, but at a reduced level. And by using assistance here, I can reduce how much load there is. So over time, you can reduce the assistance and increase the range. That ATG split squat alone might be enough for most of us not to have lower back pain. However, we have to acknowledge that we did originally sit like this. So that creates lengthening through those glutes. So we can start here and we can straighten the side, feel a stretch here. But what we're doing too is we're lengthening this whole area and we're giving these muscles some time under tension, then bend and then switch sides. So in zero, this is step six after the ATG split squat. Step five, as we get lower, you see there's actually more load on the lower back and more stretch with the goal being palms to floor, full quad contraction on each side. And we want this to be pain-free and easy for high repetitions. Then in advance here, we like to add a back extension. Now, first off, this thing was less than $200 off Amazon. I specifically found the cheapest one I could off Amazon. And as we get into advanced zero, we are talking about the option. We now have two options for every exercise, an advanced body weight version or a loaded version. So if you're loading, it means you have a rack and you have a bar and weights. And if you have a rack and a bar and weights, you can makeshift a back extension. So as I go here, I'll also put some clips to quickly just show you how to makeshift a back extension. Now the first step would be getting comfortable for 25 reps full range. That means going down as far as you're comfortable, like not just stopping short arbitrarily. Let yourself go down. And then when you come up, squeezing those glutes, because actually if you go here, look, you're cheating gravity. So there's not as much tension here as here. So this does allow a more advanced body weight version than the elephant walk stretch. Then, once you can do 25 in a row, you now are gonna to try to build back up to 25 in a row, single leg. Now this is no joke. We're now getting a really nice stretch there and a really nice squeeze. And what's interesting I've noted is in basketball, I've done thousands more jumps off my left leg, pulling with that hamstring. So on this, when I do my left side, my hamstring barely burns, but my lower back muscles, which I, I guarantee as a right-hand person, I haven't, when I reach for the groceries with one arm, it's not with the left arm, right? It's right here. So my right side is so strong, I don't feel any burn when I do the right side, but I feel my hamstring, which has thousands less jumps. Anyways, it doesn't mean we're all in balance, but it's pretty cool that compared to just trying to progress to loads or deadlifts or something like that, which is totally fine, but if we look at a deadlift, how much stretch is going on and then how much load is there at the top? There's actually no load at the top. So I, I think a deadlift would be much better than nothing, but I just think that this would be more specific for longevity and for athleticism. So this is my choice. And then I do one day where I'm mastering my body weight and then another day where I'm loading. 
dumbbell at the chest would be a really simple way. And again, I'm 30. I'm trying to jump higher when I'm 40 than I do now. So again, that's kind of some insight. I have to think of the most strategic thing to bulletproof my body. So in terms of loading heavier, I'm then going like this, putting a bar on my back. So I don't think you need to go bar on back. I'm not saying you have to go on bar on back for longevity, but if I want to jump higher when I'm 40 than I do now, get the dumbbell out of the way, I'm gonna have to get stronger in those power muscles, those glutes and hamstrings and lower back muscles. And this gives me a way to do that in a very bulletproofing manner. Plus, look how easy this is to use. Look how much result you can get just with your own body weight. You could have this in front of your TV. You could actually literally do the zero program in front of your TV. You could even do many of the advanced workouts right in front of your TV. And to be clear, one little note, when you switch to single leg, as you know, if you're on the program, we go from lengthening this side to then strengthening actually the hip flexor on the other side. So that we do have some hip flexor strength and we finish out by stretching it out. So the point is that you're gonna burn so much when you do this single legged. I'm saying to try to build up to 25 in a row, then you actually go to your hip flexor exercise, then you come back and do the other side working toward 25 around. So once it goes to single leg, we then you're then gonna balance out with your hip flexor work. So I think I've covered everything here, but this used to be normal. Back pain was abnormal. Now this became normal. And for me, I'm still like this. I am on the computer many, many hours a day, writing articles, updating the site, the app, everything. So, I'm living like this. I'm not trying to avoid living like this because I know that most of us are gonna be living like this. And I have absolutely zilch, zero ever in my lower back, but I'm doing what is, based on physics, common sense to reverse the flows of excess sitting.